So uh, as a startup, there's a second lecture by uh, Professor Muteras and uh, Tian Li. So let's work as speaker. Start off uh, using the uh, well, let's call it like uh, so uh, to, to sort of see where where we are and where we are heading, and then I'll switch again some uh, some points to summarize what I've said because uh, not we that will not contain all details. I mean, that's, uh, that would take more than uh, than these lectures. Uh, so to give you some details and then say how it fits in the whole story and then I'll uh, use transparencies again as you may have seen some of them already. Uh, so uh, where, where is it that we are? Well, we do that here so that it stays uh, there if, if, uh, if I'm losing the screen. So what we were doing is essentially saying, okay, a simple situation is in which you have an incoming parton, say a quark, which has somehow process, and I, for the time being, I don't care what is happening here. Could be the absorption of a photon, but it could also be the emission of a virtual photon. Uh, uh, so when it's an annihilation process, so there's something also going on here, either incoming or uh, the quark is outgoing. This everybody can calculate, you take the square of it, and so essentially you, you have now the, the full amplitude H8 star if you want, and essentially you have this, so you, you, you know how, uh, I guess, how to, to write down such a squared amplitude, even using the, uh, the optical theorem, then you have the maximum part of an amplitude, and that sort of thing, but this is the principal saving card diagram which, uh, which I'm looking at. And that sort of things was cap is, is a principal cap. Uh, so if you got to QCD Lagrangian, so you would be able to calculate quark gluon scattering or quark photon, it is it's photon quark scattering, and you would be able to do it. The idea was that now we know there is more, so there is still this hard uh, H8 star, so this full amplitude. You know that this thing essentially is part of something coming in and something coming out. So essentially the cut is extended to having more. There's also this xx which we are going to anyway integrate over to get one object which is going to play the role later on of this, if you want, a PDF, this probability. So that was uh, sort of the uh, starting point. And of course, whatever is happening here, we want to draw again this photo here and do this. Maybe I'm going to extend this a little bit in a minute if you also include fragmentation functions. Let's, uh, let's stick to, uh, to this part and essentially say that uh, I, I will not repeat it, that this thing is, depends on this thing. It, of course, is part of this, so that's this part. And then, rather than having that having, say, here the U-spinners, essentially, which is a matrix element of the field between a plane wave, quark state, and vacuum. I don't have the vacuum now, I've got X, and I, I collect everything, and write these things in terms of this thing. Possibly we will add in a minute a spin uh, to this uh, thing, so that this, uh, that this initial incoming momentum, capital P, and this small p over here, so this is the general momenta, that this thing also is characterized by some spin state. That's actually, uh, I still have to decide depending on the time if I, I mean, I don't know if you, everybody knows, this can be spin up or spin down, but this is something an experimentalist can tune. And then you work with a spin vector, or you have a tensor polarized target. Uh, I don't know if people would like to hear a little bit on how you do this, then I uh, can try to spend some time on that. Well, everybody knows spin is obvious that uh, we know how to do it, the density matrix and then. No, no, so yes, do it at some point. Spend some time on it or don't spend time on it. Spend time. Insert marking? No, not okay. the ten, but, but the principle of saying characterizing a target with spin. 
Yes. Doing it as in a spin vector and a tensor and whatever. Is that something that could be useful to mention? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay. So that I'll well, try to include that uh, also at, uh, at some point. So, but now for the time being, let's first go again to the principles of the PDFs, etc. So, so uh, we'll, we'll get to that complication of the S. For the time being, don't worry about this S. So, in I'll now switch. I switch sometimes from one to the other. If this is that, uh, because I think oh, there's another blue one. I have to switch sometimes because I'm I'm not yet I'm not yet here. Then it's better. But then it's going down. So this this was written as an integral over d4 psi over one two four. Let me try to uh, if at some point I will be more sloppy with uh, with these uh, indices. Uh, S and P of S, and then Psi, and then let me try to put in some of the details. And I have to, of course, sneak in here. Psi bar of J, zero, Psi I, and point Psi, P of S. Because I'm going to spend some time on this matrix element. Eh? Uh, that was promised yesterday time ordering or not or uh, whatever uh, uh, integration of all which variables or whatever is uh, is going to be relevant but this is then what i call correlator and it supposedly or supposedly it describes this piece if you want of the scattering process and it is the thing which is, is simply equal to to essentially u u bar of p uh, that's that's what it is. If uh, if there would be nothing, if there would be no head-on, but now there's a head-on around it, so now it's that correlator. And as as promised, we will also parameterize that thing at some point. So uh, that's the object under investigation. So now let's see what uh, what what we are going to do with it. Uh, there's a few things. Remember this sequence that I had at some point and I said oh we are going to integrate this thing partly over some of these momenta because ultimately we are going to integrate over all momenta because this part is of course not observable this is the initial state that's and in the final state there might be some particles that you detect but this tells you that you have to integrate over d for p now the idea of PDFs is that this integration, that you do it, I mean, uh, for momenta. First of all, for momenta of a particle, I only know if it's a, known if it's a free particle. This is not a free particle. This is uh, so. So the for momenta is is, is completely useless. You, you, uh, you so this correlator is in that sense. Certainly nothing that has to do that you could even start thinking physics. On the other hand, as soon as you would say take one of these integrations and be able to do it, say the energy integration, then we don't have to worry about energy. Energy, and we have only the three momenta left of this particle. And then you could say, ah, that's nice. That's that's also what we are doing in quantum mechanics. Then we have a wave function psi of p. Then of the of the three momentum and we square that and that's the probability. I mean, so that would be now okay. This is a relativistic situation, nevertheless, and that and that I'll show you that indeed you integrate over one of them. But that requires that you are at high energy. So let's uh, let's play a little bit with that. Let's look at this particular situation. And draw the diagram there again for the time being. So that is a Q coming in momentum p originating from something then something happening to it okay so let's take the simple example of what is deep in elastic scattering so this is your clock being scattered absorbed the cube and essentially this is of course what we know is our incoming momentum p and uh, somehow a clock is produced here and that goes into x so let's see how we do that kinematics now what are the uh, things that, that, that you externally can measure, that's uh, P, 
and you can get it in the name. And you can maybe you can go to look at all the coordinates of all the feet. And we have Q. And that's something. So now let me I'm going to use now uh, coordinates of the form a vector I'm going to write. You could take a zero comma a vector, or you could use say sometimes I use here square brackets a minus a plus a t if you want a t vector. So two coordinates one and two and then a plus and a minus being a plus particularly a zero plus a three over square root two. Yeah. This is this is going to be the convenient thing in this situation if you have high energy you can imagine then the zero component and one of the components, namely the direction that something is moving, are roughly of the same size. So you see, one, the difference is going to be zero, almost zero, and the sum is going to be, the square root two is just going to be the value of square root two. That's also why some people don't use the square root two, because uh, then it's, uh, either it's, but depending on what, it's, it's always floating around somewhere. Um, uh, that's sufficient for these coordinates. I can give you the a dot b, a dot of the two vectors, that's a0, b0 minus a in a product b, but it's also a plus b minus plus a minus b plus uh, minus a t b t. I use uh, minus for the uh, spatial uh, powers to memory. So that's uh, 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 that's, that's clear, and uh, so that's uh, uh, that that we are going to use. So that's that's our coordinates. Now we're going to write these things in these terms. Now, if you have the first momentum, you can make a, I think you can make a choice. So what do I let me make the choice that the second component is uh, uh, is 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 something say a. And uh, that uh, this thing is zero. So that the, the, so this is uh, again a plus uh, sorry a minus a plus a t. First momentum I can choose the z direction. I still haven't done anything. So uh, this is this thing. Now if since this is proton, simply this is m squared over two a. I mean, there's no other possibility. I would agree. I mean, you want uh, b squared to be m squared. Now, you, you can also make some choice. You can put plus, minus, whatever. Now, and, and then you start doing a simple exercise. People, uh, we have seen yesterday, if you take q squared, people want to make this thing to be minus q squared because it, it turns out in this process to be space-like. So you. You def and this is how you define the scale. Of course, that will already, this is a second momentum, you still, you still don't meet anything over here. So I could choose now uh, something like, uh, like put, put here something like, no, put here q over square root two. Yes. Uh, and yeah, let me, let me allow, uh, let me allow a factor beta or so. Now then this thing is of course uh, uh, minus q over uh, over no sorry let me see this one do I do I want I give this thing a minus sign this plus sign uh, beta square root two so I hope still everybody is happy I mean that's uh, that's uh, that's the momentum. Still, I don't I don't need any transverse direction. So here, if I let me call this transverse direction with this choice of verb, or sometimes you use verb, sometimes t, you will see the difference at some point. So still, there is. Uh, uh, I mean, this is still completely arbitrary. The only thing that I have made sure is that this condition q squared is minus q squared is, is satisfied. Of course, uh, people realize that the interesting things later on will happen in a particular limit, and that you have one other uh, invariant now. We already used two of them. P squared is M squared we used. Yeah. We have P, but that's of course, uh, that's obvious, and the P 
kinematics is in these two. So we have this thing, and then we have independently another variable. It's uh, called two, two times m times mu, for instance. And, but then in a particular frame, it uh, does have a nice meaning. But uh, you, you know, uh, this thing is usually referred to as q squared of x delta. I mean, it has this dimension. So it, it is the ratio of the two people call it. And that's still an experimentally accessible variable. It's the Birkin scaling variable. Interesting things is that things are going to be simple in terms of these scaling variables. So that's this thing. Now, okay, that already fixes quite a lot of things because then I have it used in here. Now, to use that in here, I, I see that I get some conditions on A and B. Let me now not uh, not try to do that uh, step by step because that you can do as an as an homework exercise. Let me suppose that I take beta equals one. Let me take it simply. Uh, then uh, I'm, I'm, that's, that's going to be extremely simple because then this thing has to be Q over uh, X Jurgen times square root 2. That's, that's your, and then I have fixed A, so then this thing is M squared X Jurgen over, over Q squared. For two. That's, that's, uh, this works. Uh, does it work? Because this multiplied with that is q squared over uh, 2x Jurgen. And that's equal to the, uh, this inner product. And this thing is, oh, that's negligible. Because you see there's 1 over q, q, so that's m squared. But q squared, I mean, we are working in the limit that q squared becomes large. Q squared is not large. You 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 get uh, you should you should use something. People call that a Nachman variable. You calculate it, and it's not Q squared over over two p or q, but it has corrections of m squared over q squared in it. Then you call that an, uh, say a modified scaling variable, or the uh, uh, it's, the, it's the Nachman variable, and it includes what is called target mass corrections. But let's go to the limit that Q squared is is infinite or you know, very large, or larger than m squared. Then you see that that term doesn't matter, and that's, uh, this is the inner product. Of course, I have now solved out a a and beta from one equation. That's of course not possible. But whoever wants to put here c and there one over c and here one over c and there c is fine, because in any inner product this will cancel. So what you see is that's the nice thing of uh, of the light cone variables. You can you can collectively for all things, because I'm going to put in the small momentum, I'm going to put in the momentum k, I'm going to give that also names. And uh, so then what is, what, is, what is possible is that you collectively multiply everything with 5 and there with 1 over 5. No problem. The only thing is that that changes the coordinates and that's precisely what, what corresponds to a boost, essentially. The number five which I used, or the number c that I used, is, if you want to be precise, is e to the power eta, where eta is, say, the rapidity variable. Yeah. So that's that's how you go from one frame to another frame. But so in that sense, this is uh, uh, this is a, a nice way of working with these coordinates. And so now, what is happening in in a, in a deep and elastic scattering process is that I'm going to put these things. And now also some physics goes in, in the sense that I assume I want to describe here hadrons, and later on I want to describe something that is happening with this uh, quark. This quark will essentially, the scattered quark will end up in a jet. A jet has invariant momentum squared zero. Everything is collinear, I mean, uh, that's the idealized jet. Huh? And this, 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 uh, this P is essentially sitting in, an, in, an, uh, in a nuclear with, with momentum P. And I mean, in the rest frame, all of these momenta are small. And if I now start boosting the proton, I boost everything. So if you want at high energies for, for a fast moving proton, this P would be large, but if only one component would be large, say the P plus, the P minus will then go to zero because that's. Uh, if you want the energy and the momentum is collinear and P minus is zero, 
And the only thing that uh, this thing does in the same way is going with the same vectors. And so also P plus becomes large because it was something of the order of T and V. And the P minus becomes small. And the PT remains of so let's say of the order of 1 dV. So that's uh, that's what is happening in, in M. And so so a sense what is happening with P dot P. In the last frame you see that the inner product of P dot P is small. And I mean, if that's true in the last frame, it's an invariant and it's true in any frame. So that's sort of such soft pieces or these correlators have the properties that the momenta involved this case two momenta, that they all their inner products are small. Idealized zero, and in practice of a solid scale, but not large. But this correlator is going to be used in a process in which there are momenta like u, and then p dot q is something that is large. Okay? So the high energy limit. So that's the, that's the basic idea, and after that you, uh, you, you play a little bit with the momentum. But of course there's an assumption in that there are no particles in a photon with extremely high energy. And with high energy I mean that they are such a way that the inner product of this small p momentum of the particle and the capital P is of a hundred GeV scale. No, it's all GeV scales. That I, of course I cannot prove, and, uh, but I can. I can later on systematically investigate this because this soft piece contains everything if you want. I mean, that's what I assume. I don't know how this thing comes. If you start thinking quarks and gluons that produce this, this is this infinite set of diagrams where you can, and gluon couples for everything because the alpha is large in that regime and, and it's non perturbative, and so you have everything. Particularly, you also have things in there. I'll be a little bit like that anyway in a minute. You have things in here where this is small, and then suddenly you do this. I don't know if this thing is that is that part of this thing, or is it something separate? I don't know. Now, what what is the what is what if this thing happens to be something uh, with an L, and that is L is huge with respect to this P, what will happen in there? Now what will happen is that the P, that let me call this P prime, that the real P of this big blob is of course different from the P in P prime. Now you calculate what it is, and it turns out that the phi P of P comma S, that is, that in the limit, that, that in the limit, that if if you say this P will become large, now P plus is already large because that is what my assumption was, that this was large, that was, P minus is small, that essentially, now look at what it what starts off, it starts off essentially, look at its behavior on some of the coordinates, namely this thing, and it turns out to be of this order, and then there is some, in, some very complicated integral, which is later on going to be called splitting function, and then there is the correlator itself, now with momenta p primed, and there's an integral of p primed and whatever. And this is essentially what evolution is in this picture. So evolution tells you what this is, what what the behavior of this correlator is. And okay, no, I'm moderately happy now because indeed I see large PT don't occur. The thing falls off if PT becomes large. Uh, but it doesn't, it, it, I mean, there's one problem, I cannot even integrate over Pt, because 1 over Pt squared integrated over the transverse, the 2, D2 Pt, is going to diverge. But that's a logarithm. Mm -hmm. And anyway, in any physical process, this thing can only go up to, this integration can only go up to momenta Q of, which are of the same order, because otherwise it certainly belongs there, so it's somewhere in between. And so switching from one to the other, essentially you have these logarithms around. And if you do all of that neatly, that's precisely the outer Halley provision equations which tells you that if you do the PT integration, that the thing is not truly convergent, but is logarithmically divergent, but the logarithms are just calculable. calculable. And so if you, if you would really evolve 
any part of distribution to Q squared going to infinity, they all would collapse to delta functions at the origin in X. Yeah, I mean, there you know, they become uh, softer and softer uh, in, in X. That's precisely what evolution is doing. And, uh, and so that's, so okay, so that's, you have to do that set P. That, that's at least a consistency set that what I, what my argument was saying, that this thing only contains soft P's, soft spectral momenta is satisfied and it's moderately satisfied. I mean, it, uh, it has this uh, divergent, but that's, that's then the known, the known treatment. Anyway, in the field theory, that's, that's even beautiful because that, that's, that's precisely what you expected for a uh, behavior of, of certain matrix elements at the high energy limit. So let's not worry about that anymore. And, uh, and say this is, uh, this is fine, this is going to work. So now let's see uh, uh, what, what, uh, uh, what's all, how, how to really deal with these P's in all coordinates. Now, then I'm going to say, okay, so now I have to put in some things. Now to satisfy, first of all, the fact that uh, that uh, this thing has, has so the momenta p squared, the p squared, and p dot p are all of the order of, say, m squared. Eh? Order of, eh? they are not equal to m squared, or the p squared is equal to m squared, but the others are, should not be infinite. Now, when you see what that means, because this, these two are already defined, and whatever, and whatever, uh, when you are going to define it, it always is this cross product that is going to be inter uh, or important. So what do you see of this P? This thing must be proportional to Q. Uh, let me use Q over square root 2. And this thing must be proportional to 1 over Q, because this is something like P squared, and if you include also a transverse component here, PT or P perp, Consistent, then this is plus this thing divided by q over square root 2. Yeah, but there's no reason that this should be equal to that. So let's introduce this x. And so now what we have defined is essentially all the coordinates of p in a consistent way. I mean, I haven't fixed anything here over here. I have rewritten p in terms of essentially x pt, and I've used p squared. I could have used for this whole thing also p dot p or something, but it anyway is, uh, is, uh, is written in terms of three other variables, uh, four other variables, because pt in principle has two uh, independent components, <coughs> so four other variables. And that's, uh, that's nice, and that's nice. Because k is, uh, I can do the same, k is uh, what is produced. Now, okay, this is small, so just as this was not relevant in our considerations, this whole thing will never be relevant. Even not if x is equal to <laughs> 1 or whatever, because as, as something, if you add something, or actually let me define this as 1 over x uh, here, yeah, x times, uh, I mean it should be consistent. Uh, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, so. Uh, so this is irrelevant. Now in this line, everything is relevant. Uh, now, of course, these three momenta, they are part of the half bar P plus Q is equal if, uh, if something comes out, whatever happens to it is K, or it goes in here, so it's K. And so that's the sum. Oh, now that tells you that this is already fixed. I mean, I don't even have a choice. This something, yeah, but it seems to be of order q. This would tell me that k squared is of order q squared, because then the inner product has two factors with q. That's of course not, that's impossible. So this thing has to simply be zero. Now, maybe not zero, but small. Okay? Now, the nice thing is that this tells you